The next thing I want to do here is include these annotations into the animation because currently they're staying in the same spot even though the data is moving. And again, we're going to use this animation variable to accomplish that. First, let's look into the commands and here we have the green uh, region that you see here. Actually, this is uh, created using a range command. This is the actual command that's used to create uh, these types of overlays where it's a color that this has been set to and it's uh, at, and some amount of opacity has been added in order to allow you to see through it. And the location of the uh, range command is shown via this x min and x max interval. And here these are using the age range for each of these populations, uh, the millennials and the baby boomers, that correspond to the ages that they have in 2016. If we want to change these ages, we can actually change this number to an expression column. That's one of the really uh, nice things that I like about Datagraph is being able to have any of these entries actually be some type of expression, and that's what allows us to animate all of this. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my animation variable year minus the year 2016, and then add to that the age that's already set up here. And I'm going to do that for every one of these entries. And Let's just start with the green one, and you can see how now that moves as I change this value. And the same thing for the uh, range for millennials. So it, these expressions will just return back the date that was already in here. And now both of them are moving. But you see there is one issue here, and that is now these are going negative. This is really easy to fix. I don't want my X range ever to be going into the negative for this image or for this animation. I can go back up into my axis settings, open this up, and in the restrict for X setting, I'm going to uh, set this, and instead of being negative infinity, we'll set this to zero. Now when I move, whoops, move my animation value, you don't see that happening anymore. There is one thing, however, that I would like to also change here, and I can show you this maybe a little easier when I have the loop tool on. Now if I hover over this bar right at the beginning, notice how the by default the bars are centered at whatever the uh, where value is. And here, since the age is zero for this first bar, it's centered on zero. And I really want it to show that value going from zero to one because that's what the data is really representing. If I go into the detail view here of the bar command, there's actually a simple offset that I can use and just set this to 0.5 hit enter. Now if I go back and look at this bar, it is doing what I would like it to do, which it starts uh, at zero and basically goes to one, and I can see the entire bar within my image. The next thing that I want to do is to actually change now the labels because the actual colors are moving, but the labels themselves, again, if I move this back and forth, those are not moving with the image. If I would like to do that, then uh, the same thing I did before, this year plus 2016, using my animation variable, can be used to change the locations of these arrows. These are label commands. You can see these are created using this uh, shortcut up on the toolbar. And again, all these ages, 62, 27, 43, this is the value that we want to change over time. So I'm just uh, copying, and I copied and pasted in that expression. Now when I do this, sure enough, these move. Uh, but there's one final issue here where the uh, arrow itself, where it ends, is not moving. So I've changed the x dimension, but the y dimension is not what I would like it to be. And if you look at this uh, label command, we can hover over this range and see how 
this is in fact an xy coordinate, we changed the x coordinate to be dynamic, but the y coordinate is staying the same. There's a couple of different ways that we could approach changing the way these arrows are handled in order to have the label look appropriate when we're uh, having our animation actually run. One relatively simple way would be just to have these all go across the top uniformly and just have the arrows the same distance and located at the same point on the y-axis. And we've already set up this max population uh, variable that I could go ahead into each of my label commands and set the y-coordinate to be equal to that max pop. And notice how that's just setting the value of the end of the arrow. It is not setting uh, the distance between the arrow and the label. That is set over here to the right-hand side of our label command. And I can just change, oops, didn't quite mean to do that. Hit enter, uh, change this to the same value for each one. And this is one thing that is really nice about data graph when you can enter these values exactly. So when you have several labels, you know that these line up perfectly. Now when I change my animation, these these look very very nice. We have uh, have labels that are uniform and they they uh, they look nice together. However, if you want to go one more step in this and get to the point where both your X and your Y are moving, I'm going to show you how I did that. And the key here is that I'm using this pivot command. This is in a separate. Uh, a separate drawing command or in a separate graph where I'm using that to extract out the value for the population for each of these generations that corresponds to where I want the arrow to be located as the animation is moving. Let me show you how I created this back uh, by redoing this in the file that you see here. To do this, I'm going to make use of a relatively new functionality within Datagraph, and that is the ability to extract variables out of uh, commands, and, and that's been added for several commands. I'm going to, in particular, use here the pivot command, and let's go ahead and add a new pivot, where the rows here are going to be the age, and the value is going to be the value of my population. and I want to mask this, mask the year of the data, again, based on my global variable. But there's still a lot of data in here that I don't need. I just need these three ages that correspond to where I want the population for the location simply of the arrow. And uh, to do that, I'm going to use this part of the pivot command here that's called map rows. And by default, it's just showing all of the data, obviously, that I have in this uh, with also the fact that it's masked on that year. But this is still more than I need. And I can actually use columns to set how I want to map the data. Uh, the mapping will, in some ways, function both to mask for the ages that I'm interested in, as well as to set a name for the variables that I'm going to extract from this pivot command. Let me go ahead then and just create for you a new group that's going to contain the ages and a label for each of them. And I'm, I can just grab this data now from my uh, arrows here, the name that I want each of these to be, and my Gen X and the ages that are associated with each of these. And finally, there we go. We'll go ahead and call this the generation. This is my label for my arrow. And here is my age. Now notice what I've done here is I've created a label and I've also added this numeric column that has an expression in it. 
And this is another place where we're taking advantage of the fact that in Datagraph, anywhere where you enter a number, you can also enter an expression. And it's, again, using this global variable. Um, you can change how this is displayed any number of ways. And for example, I can show the actual number that's being calculated from this, this corresponding to these ages that you see here because our value is set to 2016. Uh, but one thing I often like to do just for convenience is to have a separate function column where I can just display the calculated value for this column that has an expression. And you see now that as I change this, we get uh, different values shown. Anyway, that's just, again, for convenience. Let's go back now to my pivot where I'm going to use these columns I created. So the rows are going to be mapped from a column. I'm going to specify the age and I'm going to have the uh, data, oops, it's actually this age, sorry about that. It's the from the arrow column. So I'm, sh I'm using the age that I entered into this new column to extract the population at each of these ages. But I don't want these variables to be called this expression, I want them to be named based on this label. So I'm going to have it display the generation. And the final step here is to use the gear menu on the right hand side to use this extract as variable. This is, again, a relatively new functionality and is only available using the pivot command uh, or, or for the pivot command when you use this. You, you'll only see that option when you have one, either the row or the column is not set to anything specifically so that you just have uh, a single column of values or a single row of values. I'm going to go ahead, therefore, and say extract as variable, and I'm going to extract each one of these. And generation X. Let me go ahead and make this a little bit bigger so I can see this better. Um, let me change the order here. So this would be my generation 1, 2, and 3 in that order. Now, uh, notice what I have here. I have variables that correspond to a popu the amount of a population that these are going to change as I change my animation variable. And now I can use these back in my labels to set this to G1. And I'm going to set this one to G3 and generation X here, G2. Might as well move these just to put these in order that they occur in. And sure enough, now when I move and change my animation variable, my labels are also changing with them. So I have this nice uh, animation where the labels also change in location relative to where I am within this data set. One final thing I did here was to adjust the location of the label relative to the end of the arrow. Again, this is set over here on the right hand side of our label command, this offset in pixels. And what I like to do often when I have several labels that I'm using similar values for is actually to create a variable that will set what this value is. For example, here I can just make a value that is my arrow height, and maybe we'll set this here to more like 25. And I can go ahead again and just make this my variable. And since there's a slider here, I can actually just adjust this to a point where it looks reasonable and it's changing all three of them at the same time. Uh, in addition, this baby boomers value, the offset here is uh, to a point where in the beginning of my animation, well, actually even through the whole animation, it's cutting off this value. I can add a little bit of extra 
height. Oops, that's the wrong one. I can add a little bit of extra height just to this one, to the baby boomers. And then in the beginning, this looks pretty good. It's not overlapping with the data. At the end, however, it is. What I actually did in the version of the file that you see here is use an expression even within this label. And I used an if statement, which is another uh, relatively new addition into data graph. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this one. But uh, you can go ahead and see essentially what this is doing is it's saying that when the year is greater than 1999, uh, it's changing what the what the value is. So it's increasing the value for the offset when I have a uh, a year greater than 1999. So I'm going to change that. Now if I run my animation, go ahead and make this a little bit faster, then you can see how the label for baby boomers is no longer getting cut off. And again, this is anywhere within data graph. We can use uh, not only numerical expressions, but even the functions such as if statements will work within these settings for the annotation parameters. I hope this video has been useful for you to see how to animate not just data, but also the various commands that we have that are, uh, that are available for annotating your graphics and images. Uh, if you have any files that you're working on that you'd like to send along for any sort of help or uh, ideas for video demonstrations, then please send them to us uh, or contact us with any questions at help at visualdatatools.com.